Ever since I started my stock photography journey around 12 years ago, I was told to shoot videos. But I didn't know how to do it, the codecs were intimidating to me, you need more gear and all that kept me away from shooting video for quite some time. And now I just regret I haven't started sooner. So if you feel the same way, in this video I'll give you some beginner advice on how to go from shooting photos to videos, which can help you to bring your stock photography income to the next level. And it's not as hard as you might think. So uh, we'll go through some technical stuff you need to know first and in the end I'll also give you some shooting tips that can help you to earn more so be sure to stick around. Uh, but first, uh, why should you shoot video? You're a photographer, not videographer, so why bother with videos? Well, the demand for video content has been rapidly increasing in recent years. So incorporating video production into your skill set allows you to stay relevant and adapt to the evolving needs of the market. Also, research shows that typically users spend six times as much time on a web page that includes video than on a site without it. And also Google ranks websites with video on the first page better than the ones without them. And also, if you look at platforms like Instagram, for example, they prioritize videos over photos. So yeah, a video is much more important than it used to be and the demand is higher than ever. And of course, if you organize a stock photo shoot, I don't see a reason why you wouldn't shoot a few videos when you already have everything set up. Okay, uh, let's move to some technical stuff you need to know about shooting video. So uh, pretty much any camera that you bought in the last 10 years has the option to shoot video. Of course, some are better than others, but to start, you don't need to buy a special camera to shoot video. Just start with what you have. And there are two main settings that you need to change when you switch from photo to video shooting. Of course, uh, first one is switching from photo to video mode, uh, but yeah, that's quite obvious, so that doesn't count. So uh, the first setting is shooting mode. So uh, when I'm shooting photos, for example, I like to shoot in aperture priority mode with auto ISO because that just gives me the best results. But for video, you want to shoot in full manual mode because you don't want your exposure to change during the video. You want the exposure to be consistent throughout the whole video and that's why you should shoot in manual mode. And the second one is white balance. Again, when I'm shooting photos, I use auto white balance because I can always adjust that later in Lightroom. But for videos, you should manually set white balance again because you don't want the white balance to change during the video. You want it to be consistent. And try to set it right in the camera because when you're changing white balance in post-production, you're actually losing quality. Okay, uh, let's also talk about frame rate, resolution and shutter speed settings. So, um, what frame rate should you shoot at? So, for real-time videos, you should shoot at 24 or 25 frames per second because that frame rate is typically used in the movies and it looks the most cinematic. And if you want to create some slow motion shots, shoot in 50 or 60 FPS or even higher, like 100 or 120 FPS, if you want more that uh, extreme slow motion. And then you can just slow that down in your editing software. Of course, that will depend on your camera's video capabilities. Also, if your camera allows, shoot in 4K resolution. Of course, most cameras these days have these options, but if you have an older camera, you might only have full HD. But yeah, it doesn't matter, just if you can shoot in 4K. I know that uh, some customers don't need 4K, but you want to be sure that you're shooting at the best possible resolution, so you're not losing sales because of that. Of course, if you think that the scene will look much better in extreme slow motion and you can only shoot that in full HD with your camera, of course, do that. But when you can, just shoot in 4K. Okay, uh, the next setting that is quite important is shutter speed. So when you're shooting, you should use something that's called 180 degree shutter rule. And that means that you should use a shutter speed that is twice your frame rate. So if you're shooting at 24 FPS, you should should use a shutter speed of 1 48th of a second or usually that will be 1 50th of a second with most cameras. And if you're shooting slow motion at 120 frames per second then your shutter speed should be 1 240th of a second or 1 
250th of a second with most cameras. And that way you'll get the most natural motion blur in your shots. If you're shooting with a shorter shutter speed, your videos can look a bit choppy, especially if there's a lot of movement in your shot. Of course, usually on stock photo shoots, when there's not a lot of movement, you can get away with a shorter shutter speed and no one will notice it. But anyway, just try to be as close as you can to that um, twice the frame rate. Now, uh, if you're shooting outdoors or in bright spaces a lot, you will want to buy an ND filter to get that 180 degree shutter rule. Uh, because in photography you can use a shutter speed of 1 2000th of a second, but for video, if you want to get that 1 50th of a second for real time videos, you will need to cut down the light that's coming into your camera. And you can do that by closing the aperture, but then you won't get that nice background blur. The better option will be to buy an ND filter and put it in front of your lens. So you want to get a variable one like this one where you can quickly adjust the strength of it. Uh, so I'm using these uh, Freewell magnetic ones which are great because you can simply attach or detach the filter or if you need you can just replace it with stronger one. If you're interested I'll put a link down in description. Now uh, let's move to stabilization. So for stock you want your videos to be 5 to 30 seconds long and if you want stable videos you usually don't want to shoot handheld. So in the beginning I suggest you just put your camera on a tripod and shoot the scene. Especially if you're new to video that way you won't have to deal with camera movement stabilization and all that and you can focus more on your camera settings and the action you want to capture. Of course uh, there is an option to shoot handheld. Most cameras these days have very good stability me for example I shoot handheld a lot and if needed I stabilize the video later in post-production. But in the beginning I would just avoid that. And of course later you can buy a gimbal uh, like this one here for example. So uh, this one is from Zion, it's very light, so great for traveling. Uh, it's quite cheap but yeah, it's not the best but uh, for my needs it's good enough. Uh, okay. Uh, you can also buy a slider. Um, I bought one for around $250. It's motorized one and you can control it through the app. But on the shoot you want to move around quickly. So it's quite time consuming to set it up, get the framing right and all that. So I just don't use it on our stock shoots. So okay, uh, the next two things are actually related to the shoot itself. So the first thing that's very important when shooting video is coverage. Now this will take time on the shoot because you will have to repeat one scene multiple times and in between change camera location, maybe switch lenses and things like that. But it's important to get different angles or different compositions of the same scene because in video there will be clients who will want to buy multiple clips and edit them together to tell the story. So if you only have a wide shot of the scene they will only buy that one video or not buy it at all. But if you have the same scene shot wide, medium and a close up and maybe also from the other side, they might buy few of them to combine them together in their project. So yeah, always try to get a wide shot which will tell the viewer where the scene is taking place, then medium shots to show who the scene is about and then also close up shots of people's faces to show their emotions or maybe a close up of their hands to show what they're doing. Now, uh, yeah, like I said, that will take time, but it's worth it because it can increase your revenue in the end. And another thing that will help you to earn more is thinking of your scene as a story. So, for example, if you're shooting a business scene, don't just shoot people sitting in the office and working or talking. Think about what was happening before and after that. So shoot people coming into the office, people preparing for work, opening their laptops, making a coffee, then of course people working. They might have a business meeting, phone call, a brainstorming session or similar. And of course they're hungry so they have a lunch break, coffee break and in the end they also leave the office. So you can see that there's much more to shoot than just people working in the office. And that way there are more chances that a client will buy multiple clips and edit them together into a story. So uh, if you're a beginner in this uh, stock photography videography world, definitely check this video here where I talk about my beginner tips in stock photography. And until next time, stay awesome, keep shooting and I'll see you in my next video.